All right, welcome back again. In this video, I'm going to cover um, how to make your kill listeners slightly more complicated and actually give feedback to the player as they step through the listener. Um, in the previous video, I showed you guys how to make a basic kill listener and a kill quest. But the problem with that was that when the player kills a zombie, like the first, second, third, it doesn't actually tell them anything. So if you have that set to a high number, like 25, it's a little confusing for the player because they have no feedback. They don't know what their progress is. And some people may think they're not actually on the quest anymore. Um, so we're going to go ahead and attempt to remedy that situation. Um, this is going to take about three or four concepts that may be hard to grasp because I haven't touched on them at all. I'm just going to kind of throw them in there. So have a little faith in me. Um, I will explain the usages of the things we're doing um, in this instance, but a lot of things can be used in scripts in other places in a lot more complicated ways. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to our listen command that we did in the last um, video, and we're going to change it to quantity 1. And the reason we do that is because now we want it to, to run a set of commands every time we kill something. Um, so, um, this listener is going to build, it's going to listen for one zombie to, to be killed, and then it's going to complete. And when it does complete, we want to run a new um, task script called zombie quest check, where it's going to check what the user, or it's going to check what the player has done so far. So we're going to get rid of what we what we had previously. Um, get rid of that. And we'll, so this one, zombie quest check. Um, so the first thing you want to do, sorry, I skipped a step here. Zombie quest check. And then we're going to use the flag command, which all, it, all a flag is, is a... Uh, variable or a value that you can assign to the player, to the NPC, or to the server. In this case we're going to use a player flag and it's going to be called zombie count. Okay, um, This is one of those more advanced concepts that I'm not going to get into too much detail but for the sake of what's going on here what we're doing is we're assigning a value called zombie count with a value of zero. And that flag is going to represent the current amount of zombies the player has killed. So when this listener is created here in line 26, the player has killed zero. Um, so back down here at the check, the first thing we want to do, because we know that this check is run every time the player kills a zombie, we want to flag the player zombie count plus plus. And what that does is it increments the flag. So every time the player kills a zombie, the zombie count goes up by one um, and stores the new value. So the first time, the zombie count is going to go up by one and it's going to store a value of one. Then it's going to go up by one again and store a value of two. Um, well, it won't go up again yet. So the next thing we do is after we've counted, we need to use an if statement. And this is again another concept that we're just going to touch on, um, and it's an if statement is going to take a video on itself to fully explain. But if statement is how you have logic inside of a script. So in the if statement, we have to check if the player has the flag. So we do player dot flag, which is going to get the value of the flag. And we're looking for the value of zombie count. So we and we want to get that as an integer. So again, a couple of concepts you're not fully used to. Um, we're using this tag here to get the value of the current flag called zombie count. 
So the first time this is run, it's going to increment to one, and this is going to return, this tag right here is going to return one. So we want to check if that value is greater than or equal to five, and because we're looking to kill five zombies. Um, so if it is, um, we're going to run a certain task. In this case, we'll call it zombie quest reward. And then under here, we do else, meaning if it's, so if it's anything other than greater than or equal to five, so less than five, it's going to run zombie quest continue because you're continuing the quest um so basically we check if it if there's if the players killed five if they have then we run the reward task script if they haven't then we run the continue task script so um our next step is going to be coming down here and making the continue task Um, this one's pretty straightforward. All we really need to do in this one is um, reapply a new listener. So we're going to copy that there and paste it there. Um, so it, it says the player hasn't killed five, so we start listening for the next zombie to die. And then we run the check again and we repeat that process. Um, then we need to create another task and this one's going to be the reward task and this is going to be the one um, that we originally had made where you know you say you narrate to the player something you know you narrate to them something and then you zap to step I think it was three of the scripts from above the kill quest script um, and so now, um, we have the same logic we had before, but we have a little more control. Um, so we were talking about wanting to feed back to the players. So in the check, after we've counted the zombie that they've killed, we can narrate to the player that they have, you have killed, um, and this is where we want to use the same tag to get the amount you've killed that many out of five zombies. So in the game, this is going to change to the value of zombie count. So the first time it'll say you've killed one out of five zombies. The second time it'll say you've killed two out of five. Um, and then the last time it'll say you've killed five out of five zombies. And um, down here we'll say return back to Bob and then it saps to the uh, the next step where they get their reward so now this one is slightly more thorough it's a more um, immersive quest per se it, it makes the player feel like they're doing more even though it accomplishes the same goal with this extra line of feedback um, it allows the player to know exactly where they're at at any given point. Um, an extra step we can do is um, if you go up here into the hurry hurry up player um, section of the original interact script where the NPC is waiting for you to finish, you know, you can wait and, or, sorry, we can wait one and then we can chat and say something along the lines of, ah, uh, sorry, you've only killed that many zombies. So when the player goes back, they can always check what, you know, what their count is. And this is, and that this kind of stuff is more relevant when you have um, something harder to come by, like if you're using a kill listener for 
I don't know, say, ghasts, if the player wants to check that while they're in the overworld with the original NPC or whatever, you know, they don't have to go kill another ghast to know how many they've, they've killed already. Um, so, that was a quick video on how to make these slightly more complicated. I'm sorry if I've been rushing through these. I'm just trying to get some content out there so people know what they're doing. Um, I'm going to try to make another video tonight before I go to bed uh, to cover world scripts as a request by McMonkey. Um, so, thanks again, guys. Check the description for information on getting some help. And, you know, subscribe. I, I will produce more videos for you guys, even if it takes months. <laughs> thanks again.